Uh, Melody the Tin Man, I'm not sure if it was that aluminum fur wrapped around your waist that made you act all crazy today, but we finding out a lot about you. Y'all ready to talk about it? Cue the music! Oh yes, bitches and hoes! I'm back! I drop a player like it's nothing, it ain't working out. Now no debate or fuck discussion, bitch, I'm walking out. I'm walking my time is money, I ain't loving, let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out, look how I just bossed it out. Now come on baby, why you bugging, we can't talk it out. I keep it moving, I ain't tripping, lost another spouse. I'm just a boss, it's in my blood, no, I won't scream or shout. Grabbing my keys. Cause oh yes, bitches and hoes, I'm back. Back with another video for the new year. What's up? <laughs> Happy New Year, y'all. Um, you know, I took a little break because what wasn't really going on. I didn't even know they was playing Love and Marriage Huntsville in um Royal Housewives of Potomac until I started getting on Twitter. I said, oh girl, I'm behind. But I'm here with the video for y'all so we can get right into it. So this is uh season five reunion part one. Oh, uh, I don't know, probably about three parts gonna be up in this thing. I'm learning a lot about the ladies. Uh they all all their mans is cheating. But I've been saying that. Uh, they all in denial. Every last one of them. And uh, Mel had the stank attitude from the time she walked up on here and even picked a fight with Maurice. And for that, I didn't really understand. But let's get into it. So the episode opens up. Everyone arrives. Carlos goes around asking the people what their goals are for the um, night. Kimmy said her goal is to watch the fireworks. Tisha said over there talking about <laughs> what Carlos said. He said, who we got to look out for the bully or some of the nature. And she said, the one with the Mr. T-chain. She was talking about Mel. That was a cute little dig. Um, Miss Wanda now, she dressed damn near like um, Carlos. He, he goes to see Martel. Martel is in the, in the talking on the phone with Sheree. So he gets on the phone with Sheree and say, hey, Sheree, you know, what should we talk about for the reunion tonight? And Sheree was like, well, he's a good father. He's a, he's a good man, Savannah. He's a good, good, good man. Better than what you see on TV is what Sheree told, told us. And, you know, he might be a good man and a good father, but Sheree is not the person we want to get that type of information from because we saw how she was with Tyrone. If she could choose Tyrone, then we don't believe nothing you said. Oh, uh, Sheree, you are not a good source. But anyway, um, Carlos asked her if she in love, and she was like, <coughs> the phone is breaking up, blah, 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 blah. Uh, just say no, I don't love that bald head motherfucker yet. Give me a little minute. Um, and look up uh, Martell. You gonna get a ring for that when she hollered that uh she think what she what she well oh when she hollered that um that she you know he's a good father and a good man. Uh, shut up, Martell. Nobody wanna hear that shit. So now they uh the episode opens up, they get on the stage, everybody comes out, you got Letitia and uh Marso coming out. Tisha, I'm gonna call her Penny. She's over there looking like um the five or ace of pinnacles or some shit like that. All them coins hanging up off of. Look like I want to snatch ten of them to make a dollar and go get me something out the snack machine. Girl, bye. Um, Kimmy, shout out to Kimmy. She done beat cancer and done turned into a whore. Kimmy, your outfit looked like you was going to a doggone sex dungeon party down there with Candy and them. Or it looked like you was going, oh, you was a madam at a doggone a, 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 a whorehouse. That's what it looked like. It was cute, though. Listen, everybody was cute, but I just found digs in everybody. Um, you know, the men was dressed nice as usual. Uh, Martel, shout out to Martel. He didn't come up there with the doggone, um, the, the old cloak, doggone suits he be wearing, looking like he way back in 1772. Uh, and then last but not least, Mel comes out wrapped in a whole ball of aluminum foil, looking like a silver Christmas tree ornament. But it was cute, though. It fit real nice. It gave me Melody the Tin Man. It was really, really cute. Shout out to Mel for that. You know what I'm saying? But he starts off by saying everybody's proud of each other. You know, one thing about this group, y'all have y'all bets, y'all back and forth or whatever. But at the end of the day, y'all always have each other back and y'all proud of each other's business ventures because they did the uh, playback of all their business ventures and everybody doing their own thing. Now, this leads Carlos into saying, you know, it's good that everybody's like that. Then, uh, I believe it was Maurice said, yeah, you know, it's a good thing that everybody, you know, we started from here and I, to look at each other's accomplishments. I'm supporting each other. I want everybody to be together and support each other. And Mel is over there sitting with the same face like this. And I'm like, oh, Lord, what didn't happen now, Mel? What didn't happen now? So apparently Mel is upset 
because she said she feels some type of way when um what's his name Maurice went on a dog on interview and basically said that her and Kimmy not that close of a friends. Well, you say that all the time, Mel. Do you not get up here and say, y'all are not my friends? I'm friendly with y'all? How many times have you gotten up and said, oh, I'm not trying to hang with them or nothing, but, you know, we could be cordial with all of them? I get it. You was here for Kimmy when Kimmy had her thing. Everybody, we all were, but that still don't make you a friend. You said it out your own mouth. That's not, that's, that, none of these people here are your friends. That's what you're saying. Now you feel some type of way because Maurice basically said the same thing. Kimmy interjected at the uh, Mel was trying to get Maurice uh, together, aka uh, Martin Luther King is what she uh, called him, a Maurice Luther King. And uh, Kimmy interjected and was like, "Well, Mel, honestly, you were there for me when I needed you. So you know, in that aspect, yeah, we're we're friends. But we don't shoot marbles together. We ain't going to get massages. We ain't at the gym. We ain't hanging out on a weekly basis. But you have been there for me. Mel's whole thing is, yeah, but I just didn't appreciate that because it looks like." You know, it's downplaying my friendship. Girl, Mel, everything isn't about you. Like, it's just not. I'm sorry. Even Kimmy had to bring up the fact that you said Maurice was the most uh, irrelevant on the show, which he is. But still, that means he got less drama. You brought that up, and I'm with Kimmy. We can't keep writing each other off for one doggone statement. Jeez Louise, especially when you throw more shade than anybody in the doggone interviews, uh, Mel. That's why Miss Wanda Moe was down there saying, sugar mama need to find her real daddy. Because remember you got up there and said her baby daddy was in your DMs and she said you need to find your real baby daddy. You remember that? See, you Mella stands don't be wanting to hit that door. Because you know Mel can do no wrong. You know, and I, I, I thought about it. I feel like most women identify with Mel the way they do and they take up for her and they hold her so near and dear. It's because they, they trauma binded. Mm-hmm. They still can't get over when they got cheated on and, and they man had a baby on them and, you know, it, it still hurt, you know. So seeing somebody like Mel persevere just makes them want to trauma bind and take all the BS even when she did wrong. I'm sorry, your girl did wrong. I said what I said. She said wrong. She she had no reason to make it seem like this was a big old deal because Maurice said y'all ain't friends like that. Y'all ain't. You said it out your own about y'all ain't friends like that. Y'all ain't. Move on. It ain't even that deep. Like, how you beefing with Maurice? Maurice don't beef with nobody. I, I just really, I just didn't get that. Anyway, Carlos moves on to doggone um, Scott Manor and says the new, uh, she by, not she by Sheree, Chateau Sheree. Because it's be turning into Never Never Land. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't think about it, but we've been talking about Scott's Manor until we got up on this dog on TV. Y'all ain't even splattered the dog on concrete nowhere or dug a hole up there on that hill. What is going on with y'all, Maurice? Not Maurice. Marceau and uh, Kimmy. Not Marceau and Kimmy. Marceau and Tisha. Shit. What is going on with this shit? Now, you holler y'all gonna break ground this season. Listen. Kim, Tisha said it's gonna be worth the wait. I mean, I guess Chateau Charest was worth the wait, but it took us 15 and a half years to get it. Now, we ain't got all this time to be playing with y'all, Okay. Somebody drill something in the doggone ground so we can hurry and get the shit all over with. But uh, Carlos goes on to ask Tisha. She was like, he was like, you know, you started out as a housewife, and um, now you managed to make it in the business world. Like you and Maurice's Maurice Marceau are basically uh, partners. How does that How does that feel? And how does that work for you, Marceau? Now Marceau said he he really don't like it. He wish she was back at home churning butter like he wanted her to do in the beginning. But you know, this is a new day, Marceau. She's not churning butter no more. And like um, Carlos said, everybody was surprised to know that she she was majority on those scope. You know, that was a big deal. Because see, we all thought Kimmy, I'm mean, not Kimmy, uh, Tisha was a little slow. We still do though. Um, I know she got 50 million degrees. Degrees don't mean nothing, but you can pass the test. And I know I got two. Um... That don't mean nothing. That don't give you no common sense. But, you know, people were surprised that she was majority owner. And, you know, she said, you know, it was the best decision I made to buy uh, Martell about for pennies on the dollar. I said, ooh, he must have been desperate. Yeah, he had to be. He had to be desperate. She said, Scott is not a multi-million dollar uh, company. She said, when she got it, it was in the hole. And now it's a multi-million dollar company. Martell said it was the worst decision I ever made, but then said he don't regret it. And then, like he said, which made sense, he said it was a brand new business. I kind of started it up with y'all because I had experience in this particular business. I mean, any business you won't see a return for the next four to five years. So that sound about right that y'all making money now. Like, sound about right. Don't try to play on me 
Like, you know what I mean? But the part where he bought, where uh, she bought you off of pennies on the dollar, that tells me your ass was desperate, uh, Martel. Was you trying to catch up on that child support? Why would you sell your, your share of that company for pennies on the dollar? Just don't make no doggone sense. Um, Maurice added, not Maurice, Marceau adds in the fact that, listen, he came up with the idea and all of that, but I came in with the builder's license did. Because, you know, they ain't had no license around there. And then I had the experience of running a company. So that's how we was able to get this up and running. Shout out to Scope. They need to change it from Scope to Scott. Take the L out. They add a T. Because hope ain't nowhere in there. That's what I'm saying. But uh, they asked him also how it is working with his wife. He said, look, man, I still want in the kitchen churning butter and washing uh, clothes on the board out back. You know what I mean? But uh, Tisha said, you know, if anybody's successful, can y'all come give us some advice? And, you know, immediately I thought of uh, not Destiny, Stormy and her man. But then I forgot, you know, her man is really her um, help. So that wouldn't be a good couple to get no advice from. Girl, you ain't going to be able to separate that shit. Y'all going to be at each other next. But y'all gonna make this sh money. That's just the way it is. But um, we find out through Tisha that the reason Marceau went to Africa was because he was so stressed about this lawsuit that they say oh they had put on his new company. You know he said he was real hurt it by that. You know what I'm saying? Hurt it, hurt it. That's what he was. So he had to flee all the way to Africa. Now Carlos King asked uh Tisha. She was like he said so. Well, uh Tisha don't lie. Was you upset that your man left you and went down there to Africa because he was in his feelings about a doggone business deal going wrong or being sued or whatever the case may be? And she said, you know, I ain't gonna lie. At first, I felt some type of way because that's not we as a family we were supposed to do. But I understood, you know, after a little while. And then Martel was like, oh, so he had to go away from home. Martel, you shut your ass up. Because that's why you're in the position you in. You better hope Sheree stick by you. She probably will if she stuck by Tyrone for all this time. But, um... She said, yeah, he went to Africa. At least he wasn't at the gym now, Tisha. We all know that Marceau ain't got to be at the gym, but we all know Marceau going to Africa looks shifty as hell. I don't care what nobody say. Ain't no goddamn way you going all the way across the globe because you stressed out by yourself. Boy, please. Hell, they asked uh, Kimmy, and Kimmy said, ain't going to do it, ain't going to happen. Don't even ask me. Don't even let you finish the question. I'm with Kimmy on that. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Like, it just doesn't make sense that you feel like you, you know, like he ain't do nothing. But like she said, I trust my husband. You know, I trust him and that's why I'm married to him. And, you know, God's going to reveal if he's cheating. Girl, God done already slapped you across the head four or five times with stuff that you won't look into because you don't want to find out the real answers. But, you know, it just doesn't make sense. But Carl, uh, Carlos tells Tisha, he was like, look, girl, you a very smart girl. You got 50 million degrees like uh, Wendy. Oh, uh, you got a lot going on, but it's some, it somehow comes off very naive. You come off a little naive when it comes to Mar Marceau. Would you, you know, do you believe that he's ha ever had any infidelity? And she said, no, all it's been was rumors. She said, I'm going to stick by, by my husband because they ain't got nothing but rumors. If there was something going on out here, trust and believe somebody would have came out with the receipts. So then Carlos King was like, well, shit, didn't they have his alleged back? And she was like, girl, please, that wasn't enough. Just like with Martel. When Martel was out there cheating, all type of stuff came out, like pictures, receipts, and the elevator, and all of this and that, and the third. But we find out here that only came out per Martel. I'm sorry, that only came out because... Mel was the one who put it all out because you see that's the type of shit they was doing. You know that was around the time he was saying that uh he don't know if Sugar Mama is because she was out there sucking the thing in the uh, hotel. Remember that? Um, that's why that's how Miss Wanda ended up going in on her about that. But nevertheless, then when they were going back and forth with each other, they were hammering at each other, right? And, you know, that was what Tisha was using to say it can't be true because ain't nobody came up with no receipts. She said, because what I do know about these two is if it was true, they would have definitely come up with some receipts. Now, Carlos was like, well, Mel, no, first he asked Martel, he was like, remember you said uh, Marceau had 20 girlfriends? And Martel, like, I don't remember all that. I don't remember all that. I don't know. I ain't speaking on that. He said, well, um, you know, 
what about all the other things you said about him, you know, this, that, and the third? And Tisha was like, yeah, remember you texted me a receipt saying that he bought a girl a Mercedes and he been with her for four years? And look at my said, I don't know about all that. Blah, 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 blah. So Carlos asked Martel straight up, straight out, like, look, has Martel ever cheated or does he have 20 girlfriends? I don't know. Has he ever cheated? I'm not speaking on it. With at least one woman. Teacher had to jump in because she don't want to come out that she's with a cheating ass man. Girl, look, all y'all is. All oh, y'all were cheating men. Most women in the United States are. That's just the reality of it. I don't understand the big deal. Like, just be what it is and say what it is. I, I, what's the big deal? He turned the dog on mail and asked her if, it, if she heard anything. And she said, well, let me ask you. And so we all looking like, wait a minute, Carlos, you know something about something? Well, she claims that uh, when he called her on the phone, the girl that was allegedly cheating with Marceau was with her. Carlos said, but I have never specifically heard no woman say, listen, you know, this is, this is my man. This is who I've been sleeping with. I've been sleeping with him or whatever. Um, honestly, I feel like Mel tried to throw Carlos under the bus real quick. I mean, even if the girl was with you, did she get on there and say, hey, this is what it was? And was you calling Carlos or was Carlos calling you so y'all could conspire to get the girl up there? We'll find out here in a second. But, um... He turned to Tisha and said, girl, look, would you leave your man if you find out he cheated in the past? No, I wouldn't leave him. I'm going to stick beside him. And then he was like, she was like, but ain't no proof that he did nothing. And he was like, well, didn't Chris Fletcher say that he wasn't with him all day out there in Atlanta? Oh, yeah, he said he was with him for two hours. But, you know, still, I'm not going to leave my man. Let me say this, Tisha. I would rather you not look so stupid and naive than get up here and just say, look. I don't even, whatever my soul got going on, don't even bring it to me. I don't want to hear it. That's my husband. That's my business partner. My baby daddy. I'm not leaving him. It don't even make sense for us to even talk about it. Like, what's up? I would rather you say that than to act like you don't believe what people are saying is true. Because there's some truth to every rumor. That's just period. That's just the way the world works. But you must sit up here and act like, you know, your husband ain't this and your husband ain't that. Girl, whatever they said that nigga did, he did that shit. Say what I said. I don't care what nobody said, girl. You're over there looking naive. She said, and, but I, I will agree with Tisha with this. Tisha said, I would be a fool to leave my man off of rumors when nobody ain't produced no receipts. I give you that. But when there's smoke, there's fire. And girl, the woods is on fire, girl. It's a forest fire in your house. That's all I'm saying. Um, We already talked about him asking Mel, and Mel acting like she don't know what the hell going on. Now, on the brinks of that, Tisha was like, oh, is that the girl you claim that, I mean, that you so-called paid to come on the show? And look at me, I never paid anybody. I would never pay on anybody. Tisha came and said, the girl called her and said, look, Mel was supposed to be my best friend. And she offered me $5,000 to come on this show and say I was sleeping with your husband. And the fact that she would get on TV and expose that, that really hurted me. So I had to call you and tell you, girl, it ain't true. It ain't true. It ain't true. Now, granted, if she have said more than five, maybe six, I would have got up there and did it. But she ain't have enough money, so I ain't pay her. Mel, I believe uh, you was paying the girl. Sorry. Because even when Maurice jumped in and was like, well, how would the girl know about a girl stripping? How would the girl know about coming on the show? Well, it was a conversation that was had. And she asked for money and I told her she needed to talk to production. Why would she talk to you about money? If this wasn't coming from you and this was coming from production, why would she even be having a conversation about with you about the money, the money issue? That would be a production thing, right? If you weren't gathering her to bring her up on the show, why was y'all even having a discussion about... The girl stripped and what's going to be said and all of this, that, and the third male, you're guilty. You was trying to get that girl up there to come talk that shit about uh, Tisha and, and Marceau. I feel like you've been trying to do that ever since you found out Martel Peanut Head has been cheating on you four years ago. I feel like you feel like since your marriage has went to the shits, you want everybody else's marriage to get to the shits. I also feel like you paid um, Kiki to get her uh, line ass up there just as we going to find out here in a second. I believe you paid. I believe you paid these girls. I believe you offered to pay this one girl. I believe it all. Sorry. It just is what it is. I believe it. I just do. I mean, the shit just don't make no sense. How is all these people saying all of this? And Mel, you going to sit up here and act like you don't know what the hell these people are talking about? You you paid them. You offered to pay them. But you ain't have enough for this girl. That girl said that was too much to kill her reputation. You know what I mean? She wasn't doing all of that. 
So Carlos brings up the fact that, you know, they have their off-camera doggone conversations between the six of them and basically says that they've, they've already made a pact that there are certain things that are off-limits. Uh, Martel jumps and hollers, yeah, the first thing off-limits for Kimmy is having more, saying that Maurice is out after 4 o'clock in the morning. And he asked her why, and she said because it just gives women the um, wrong, the wrong, what did, what did she say? It gives them the wrong idea. Oh, that your man is singing is running these streets? Oh, because at 2 o'clock, it's different from 4 o'clock. So if a woman see your man at 2 o'clock, she's not going to think he's cheating. But if she see him after 4, then he definitely cheating. Got it. Girl, Kimmy, you naive as well, too. You naive as hell. Now, this comes up and brings up the fact that, um, well, before we get there, Marceau said we thought we made a pact, but them two have us talking about Mel and Martel. As soon as they get a chance, they spill an hour tea. Now Martel almost out of your ass, Marceau. You need to shut up, cause like Mel, like Martel said, we have a bro code, and it's a lot of things that I know that I ain't never seen. You really gonna sit up here and say we spill all your tea? Now I really could have really did you dirty, now Marceau. Hush your mouth, hush puppy is what he was saying. I'm with you on that, Martel, because Martel knows way more than what um, he's leading off to be. So now this prompts Carlos to ask about this so-called rumor on Twitter that they used to have an after-hour spot where they was down there having a sex party. Talking about more recent them. Uh, Kimmy said she want to be transparent and, and air it all out. She said, I ain't going to lie. Back in the gap, which is back in the day, Maurice said areas. Marceau, you know, and a couple of the dudes used to like to go sit and drink and then hang out and smoke or whatever the case may be. And it was just a hangout spot. I had a little office up top. They just used to hang out at the bottom, but it wasn't no women involved. Kimmy, you're a damn fool if you believe that. I even asked my man. I said, babe, tell the truth. Is there a possibility? What is the possibility of that being exactly what Maurice and Marceau saying it was? He was like, I ain't gonna lie, it's slim. It's slim. It's not that it's impossible. It's just not probable. Girl, you a damn fool. And then furthermore, why is you up there explaining to us what was happening and assuring us that there wasn't no women involved when your ass wasn't even there? Now, I get it. You got up there and said, oh, yeah, but we were not dating. First of all, we were not dating around that time. You were smashing them. It wasn't official, but y'all were smashing. Say what I said. Um, but you're looking naive, fat. He ain't saying nothing. He just sitting there talking about how he gonna sue people. And you said you over there assuring us that they ain't had no women around there. Even Carlos King said as a gay man, ain't no group of men getting together often to go sit down and listen to the damn Beyonce. It just don't happen. No, and that's not true because that's why they got black. Kimmy, you a damn fool. And look at Marceau trying to clear his name. See, I wasn't there as much. And like Kimmy said, but your ass was there. It don't matter. But uh, Maurice said if y'all out there saying that he had a sex dungeon party, y'all got a lawsuit coming. Stop playing on his face. That on his name. Um. But anyway, uh, Carlos said there's, there's truth to some rumors. Ru all, all rumors ain't stemming from complete falsity. I'm with, I'm with him on that. So now he goes to Tisha and tells Tisha, look, girl, at the end of the day, I feel like there's a level of naivety, if that's how you say it. But you naive, girl. You in danger, girl. You, you 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 come across like you're so intelligent, but you ain't going to leave your man. We already knew that. Let's move on. They bring Miss Wanda Mo and Kiki to the stage, and they do the flashback of all of that. And Kiki was mad because uh, Kimmy and uh, Mar Mar Marceau, not Kimmy, Tisha and Marceau told Mel and Martel that she was around there addicted to them drugs. I'm glad they did, as they should. Because guess what? I would have wanted to know if you were sticking your damn nose in my medicine cabinet still in my damn prescription pills, and I don't even have none. But that is a need-to-know basis. Uh, Kiki, you out of pocket. You was going around people's houses stealing their drugs out their dog on medicine cabinets. M medicine is expensive. Because see, I would have hunted you down and kicked your ass, kicked the pills up out of you. They had every right to tell Mel and Martel that what was going on with you stealing people's medicine and all of that. How can you figure they don't have the right to do that? Girl, you got on my nerves with that. But... Um, they asked Mel why she invited Kiki to the house, to the Christmas party, knowing, why, knowing that she's Tisha's cousin and her and Tisha got beat. And Mel's whole response was, it was my Christmas party. I actually knew, you know, Kiki, her and I have a mutual BFF. So I decided it was my Christmas party. I wanted her to come. Mel, you full of shit. Because you got out there just to ask her them leading ass questions for her to just be, yes, 
Yes, Tisha did say that. Tisha did say that she, you know, she had some infidelity issues. She did say, yes, she did. That's all you bought her there for. And we all see it. Kiki a little slow. We all can see that. I, I mean, nobody is denying that. Kiki a little slow. Maybe she, you know what? Kiki was on that shit. She might have needed a $5,000. That's, that's who got the $5,000, if you ask me, allegedly. But um, Tisha brings up the fact that Kiki told her, Mel told her that she pulled her and Marceau's record down there at the city hall. Now, who you know down there at city hall, first of all? And then second of all, Kiki was like, I said that? Yes, you said it, Kiki. Girl, stop acting crazy. Come on now. You're doing too much now. You, you're doing too much. But um, Kiki was like, well, no, I think she just wanted to know how Marceau was able to um afford that car he had that accident in. Well, no, that's what Marceau said. And Mel was like, that's not true. People get calls like that all the time. Mel, I believe it. I believe it. Because, see, you the one that plays victim. As soon as you feel like somebody's doing something dirty to you, and then you turn around and go pull people records and all of that, I believe every single word of it do. I believe you went down there to see how Marceau was able to afford his call. Girl, all it takes is credit and a good down payment. You don't need to have that kind of money, girl. It's just what it is. Especially if he leasing, girl. Credit and a good down payment. That's it. But, um... Tisha basically uh, is implying that Kiki is Mel's puppet and she leaves and she goes get these puppets. It was a key, not a key key, just a key. It was, it was, the, what made it the, the key that it was is how upset and how bothered Mel and uh, Kimmy, not Kimmy, Kiki was. That's what made it more funny because y'all was really reacting to it. But yeah, she is a puppet. Um, Tisha, the joke kind of fell flat, but it was funny because everybody else laughed and they didn't. That's the only reason why it was funny. But she got the dog on puppies out there saying that you're, you're going to be, do what I say. Yes, I'm going to do what you say. And the, the little wig, the blind to the side, I ain't going to lie. That was cute. That was cute. Carlos basically brings up the fact that Kiki is over there pay, playing double agent. She being two-sided. She over there talking shit to, uh, to, to, um, uh, Mail and then turning back and going to talk shit to a teacher about Mel. Uh, and ask them, have they always had this beef or is this something new? And we find out, and for lack of better terms, for, for not trying to say it all straight up, what it sounded to me was, uh, this is what it translated to me, what Tisha was saying. Tisha said, me and this girl have been friends and close since we was in elementary school. That's my first cousin. We go back and forth. Kiki got a lot of mouth, but she ain't got no hands to back it up. So I can't handle all the mouth. So back in the day, we used to just fight, but then we'd be back cool because I would beat her up anyway. That's what I got. And Kiki, see, you know I ain't never been no puppet. She said, the old Kiki wasn't no puppet, but the new Kiki needed 5,000 You get it? That's just where I met with it. Um, but Kiki was like, I was just trying to be honest. I didn't want to start no stuff. I just wanted everybody to be, you know, on the same page as far as what we were doing and what was going on. Girl, look, let me tell y'all something. Kiki, you full of crap. Um, he asked you, Carlos asked you if she's ever said to you specifically that she was uh, in, in alluding, or no, not alluding, that Marso was cheating and you said no when you got on that dog on thing at the party and said she did. And then he asked if she alluded to it. She was like, well, this is the thing. Every woman, we don't want to hear about every woman. Did the girl ever tell you or make it seem like Marceau was cheating and you tried to get that blanket ass answer? Kiki, you full of shit. And I know them $5,000 that ran out on your ass and you're going to need another five. Mel, I hope you done got another five for her to come back next season because if not, the other people is exposing your ass. You're vindictive, you're dirty, and it's the worst part. Marceau is probably cheating. Most more than likely he is cheating, but it ain't gonna come out through you, male, because you're going about it the wrong way. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville Reunion Part 1. Girl, look. Kiki, you a treasonous heifer. And if I was teacher, I'd kick your ass every time I see you. But then I uh, teach you got stuff to lose. She gonna try to sue you. Drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you all later. Bye. Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo dog time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo dog is? The nigga you just had up here.